of the daffodils in, shall we? Hello, how are you doing? Just give people a couple of minutes to arrive. And then um, we shall, hello Nigel, this might be the first one you've been, we've been doing it for a couple of weeks now, these Facebook lives, just waiting for people to join us. So just sit quietly, feel your breath. <coughs> Hello, Carrie, Jill. And this is, um, we set this up as a way of, well, turning self-isolation into a home retreat. And um, basically a retreat is a very simple format, a very simple program. So what we're suggesting is that you put, hello Natalie, nice t-shirt, it is, isn't it? It looks a bit like Aboriginal. <laughs> And um, yeah, we suggest you, you put aside three sessions, maybe 15 to 20 minutes each day. And on the page that I've sent you, there's, there are free resources you can um, link in there and follow any um, meditation that you want. Maybe three spaces during the day, three pauses, Follow two meditations and maybe do some stretching on the third one. Or something creative, if that's your thing. Or just lay down. Or do some exercise. So if you wouldn't mind um, um, sharing this on your timeline, guys, these so people have access to the free resources, that would help. So let's start off with a short meditation. We don't even need to call it meditation. We're going to have some quiet time. So we come back home to the body. The body is your home. So feel the body. Feel a breath. There's the body sitting here, it's moving. And just feel that movement. Don't need to change the breath. Don't need to breathe in any particular way. The 
We're not trying to get anywhere or achieve anything. So I'm going to tell you, um, you can carry on with your eyes closed, you don't need to look at the screen, but um, it's up to you. I'm going to tell you a, a, a story that something used to really happen. When I was, um, let me put it another way. I'm going to tell you about Sobo Mindo. You obviously know what Sobo Mindo is, everybody knows that. Okay, so I'm going to tell you about it. It's a Japanese term. So, when I was a little boy, my um, my mum used to work two or three days a week, and um, in uh, some sort of Chinese takeaway up in the northeast of England. And um, I remember, um, and Naji, my brother, is on here. He'll, he'll remember our grandmother. My mum used to take me around to my grandmother's. We used to call her Nana. And um, I remember I'd get near the front door and I'd run in and rush into the lounge where she was sitting and she'd be sitting there with her wood binds and her paper around the fire. Always seemed to be, she always seemed to be around the fire for some reason in, in her old armchair. And she'd open her arms, and she did this with all the grandkids, not just me, but I felt very special. She'd open her arms, and I'd run in, she'd kiss me. She'd say, oh, come here, son, give me a kiss. And I loved it. And sometimes, sometimes my mum would say, you know, he's been a naughty boy, don't he? He's, he hasn't cleaned his room, or he hasn't washed behind his ears, or whatever it is. And my nana would say, I don't care. You go. You go to work, leave him with me, and come here, son, and she give me another kiss. I was very, you know, I was very special, obviously, you know. <laughs> and um, what she was displaying there was Sobo Mindo, which translates roughly as grandmother mind. She had a, a, a mind that was welcoming and accepting. She, she wasn't critical of me. Not, it's not that she let us, me or us do anything we wanted to do. She, she didn't. She, she corrected us when she needed to. But she had this welcoming attitude. Come here, son. Even you, you, know, you haven't blown your nose. I don't care. Come here. It's that sort of thing. Hello, Wendy. Hello, Mada. Sharon. And um, what that... You could say that in meditation, that's what we are developing, a, a kind of grandmother mind. Not a fault-picking, blaming, uh, critical type of mind, but a one that just welcomes. It welcomes the whole lot. It welcomes our shame, our embarrassment, those parts of us that we don't like, that we want to keep hidden. And one great Zen master said the whole point of meditation is to develop Sobo Mindo, Grandmother Mind. But quite often we, we do the opposite, don't we? we? We turn away from things that we don't like. It might be a sad feeling. It might be a, a feeling of heaviness or something like a fist in the belly or the chest something uncomfortable something we don't like we find unpleasant how often do we turn away from ourselves I'm sitting in a cooter here in the middle of England and it's a beautiful space. And let's imagine that you came to the door 
and you knocked on the door and I looked up and I, oh, how would that make you feel? Not very pleasant, is it? Make you feel unwanted. It's sort of, you know, the body would, mm, I don't want to be in there, I don't feel welcome. You'd have a response, you'd have a feeling response to that. Now, if you knocked on the door and I looked up, oh, come in, now a cup of tea, come in, sit down and how are you doing? Oh, what's, what's going on? How would that make you feel? Very different. You open up, don't you? You open out. Your response is different. Your, um, your, your, your body responds differently. See, our feelings have feelings. They want to be welcomed. They want to be wanted. They want to be... All feelings are there to be felt, to be experienced. And so what we do... Hello, Divika, Wendy. What we do is we begin to welcome. And we're going to get practical over this session. And this week we're going to go into this more in detail over, over today on Wednesday and Friday. We're going to learn to welcome like a grandmother, like a, a good grandmother. Not all grandmothers, I know. But the, the, uh, the ideal grandmother we welcome. It's not, it's not that, it's that. We're going to do, move from that ugh, to that. And see, that's how we develop a more, more peacefulness in our life. Not by forever running away and turning away from ourselves. Whilst we're here, guys, if... Um, those of you who have, if you wouldn't mind sharing this on your timeline and give people access to the resources page, that would be appreciated. And so we could say that's what the whole of it is about. The welcoming and holding rather than the pushing away. Because what happens is we have a certain feeling or a certain emotion, that's something unpleasant. And what we tend to do is we tend to try to freeze it out of our experience. We don't want it. It's like, mm. and then that something, whatever that is, it might be an embarrassed, something embarrassed about or ashamed of, or a sad feeling. What happens then, it gets frozen out and it sits there as energy. That's our life force, see? And so what we do, we, we move that over there, we freeze that out, we freeze that out over there, that over there, that over there. And we end up as, you know, we're 30, 40, 50, 60 years old and we lose our life force, our vitality, because we've frozen it out. Everything in our experience holds energy. I remember the first, when I first started meditating in 1989. That um, I, I remember I was working in uh, Durham Market, and I used to um, I used to sell CDs and records and uh, all stuff like that, and had a good time. But um, it's a park in a multi-story car park. And I remember walking up these stairs just before I started meditating. I used to walk up these stairs and I was trudging. And I was only in my mid to late 20s. I was in the prime of life. And I remember thinking, why am I? I don't see that much vitality and energy. I remember starting to meditate not long after. Then after a few weeks or a few months, it's a long time ago now. I remember walking up those same stairs. I just felt different and I I didn't really know how because you know I was just meditating by myself and but somehow I'd release some energy just by being in the body that's how we release it we release the that frozen energy we 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 melt it by feeling it so when you have that you feel that tension in the body 
turn towards it, move towards it. What's this? Hmm. And if you feel something long enough, it begins to respond just like coming to the door and feeling welcomed. If something or somebody feels welcomed, they open up. I'm talking primarily of the inner world here. We still have to make changes in the external world. But still the same principle. We accept and then once we've accepted, we can decide whether we need to do something about it. Whether we can do anything about it. And so much of our um, sort of inability to be still or the cause of our restlessness is partly this. We, 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 are, we are on the run. We're not at ease with ourself. We're on the lookout for something that might challenge our sense of ourself. Or something that we find uncomfortable. We've not taught how to be with something that may be a little uncomfortable. When I lived in a retreat centre, one of my uh, mentors, he talked about meditation. And I'd never heard it before. And I thought, what an interesting way of looking at it. He says, just now and again, you go, go looking for trouble. I thought, what, I said, what do you mean? I said, well, it, well, not all the time, but now and again, when you're sitting here, look for something that's troubling you, maybe on the edge of awareness. And that was a real change because meditation's always taught as this sort of getting into this blissful state. Clear your mind. I remember the first retreat I ever went on and the leader said, leave all your troubles at the gate. Oh, that's good. That's lovely. Yeah. But I couldn't. And then the ones I were able to leave there, they were waiting for me when I got to the gate on the way out. They jumped back on my shoulder. That's what they do. So what we're doing here is being realistic. Meditation is realistic. In the in the the, uh, the guest house, the poem, we we treat each guest honourably. We welcome everything. Allow it in. Allow, allow it to be felt. What we feel, we heal. But so much of the time, see we. We don't want to feel. We don't want to feel what's here. What we want to do, we don't want to feel life or experience life. What we want to do, we want to think about it. Because then it's sort of once removed. And if I can think about life, I in here can think about life out there, it gives me like um, a semblance of control over it. If I can think about my feelings, then I don't have to feel them. I can work them out. I'll work these out. Yeah. <laughs> feelings are not there to be, we're not, there, we're not here to cure ourselves of being human. It's a celebration of being human. Sometimes we feel angry, sometimes we feel sad, sometimes we feel happy and delighted and the whole lot. Next time you feel sad, say to yourself, this is what it's like for a human being, for this human being to feel sad. This is what it's like to be human.
Next time you feel frustrated or next time you feel uplifted. This is what it's like for this human to feel uplifted. Feel frustrated. It feels like this. Oh, yeah. And allow yourself to feel the emotion in the body. Don't get caught up with the story. Oh, sorry, I could put that better, more skillfully. When you notice that you're caught up with the story, thinking, just say to yourself, oh, that's, that's thinking, that's okay, but that's not helpful right now, and come back into the body. So I'm going to guide us through a slightly longer meditation. So just sit back. A grandmother mind meditation. Just sit comfortably. Hands resting in your lap, no special posture. Close your eyes if you wish. And just take a couple of deep breaths. Just, that just helps us to arrive in the body. Gives us a sense of balance. So put on your grandmother mind. An attitude of welcoming. So we welcome the breath, we just feel it. We feel the hands, we welcome the hands. We are creating a big welcoming space. Feel around the lips. Feel around the face. Any sounds happening, we welcome those. Even the ones we don't like. And to help create this welcoming space, Drop into the heart. Helps to soften things. Are we where, what in Buddhism we call a Buddha smile? A Buddha smile is just a hint of a smile. The absolute beginnings of a smile. Notice how it softens you. A 
and feel the movement of the breath. Now there may be pleasant feeling or feelings. They may be unpleasant. Give them all space. Stay with your Buddha smile. Remain soft. Stay with the body. Just trust in this welcoming space. That's all you need to do. Just be present. Just feel what's here. If you go into the thinking mind, just label it thinking and return back home. And on the way down there, just put on your Buddha smile. Just a hint of a smile. Is there anything troubling you inside? If there is, give it space. This is your grandmother mind. Don't push it away. You give it power. You alienate it. Let it be a part of the family. So sounds may be happening bodily sensations. Maybe there, if you've got incense on, there may be smells happening. Everything is welcome. And that uneasy feeling in the gut. Is there one there? Maybe, maybe not. That little edge, edge of anxiety there's a little quiver of uneasiness. Hello. So 
and the pleasure of sitting still. So I'd like you to carry on if you wish, well, it's up to you, you and carry on just sitting with your eyes closed. I just want to finish by saying a few words. Let's take all this mystery out of meditation. Let's dispense with the whole lot of it, because there's a lot of crap about it. Meditation is about feeling, experiencing what's here now. That's what we're doing. It's not about some state, some cosmic state, some future destination. It's about you, the meditator. That's what it's about. It's about having a good, honest look at ourselves. It's a mirror. Meditation's a mirror. Oh, oh, right. Yeah. Didn't realize that I needed a shave or <laughs> the equivalent of that. And sometimes we look in the mirror, we like what we see, and we look a bit tired. So that's what we're engaged with. So that's why we suggest you take two or three slots each day and to sit down and just do something like this. And just trust in it. Just feel the breath. Feel the body. Notice what takes you away, the thinking, analyzing, you know, the, the whole movie in the head. So I'm here again on Wednesday, guys, at 12.15 again. And, um, yeah. And if you could help me by um, just sharing this on your timeline, just get it out there as many people as we can. Oh, you can open your eyes now, by the way. <laughs> and have a, have a good day. And see you Wednesday, or you'll see me Wednesday. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.